In this example, I have a couple of assets that I'm going to tie together as component assets. An office building with its air conditioning unit. I'm also going to set up another set of component assets so that you can t see two different sets. I'll tie together the office cubicle, the desk, and the chair. Now what I'm going to do here is use a custom field, rename it to parent ID, and then for each set of component assets, I'll pick one as a parent and enter that asset's company asset ID in the parent ID field for all of the related assets. Once I do this, I'll then be able to create a component asset group using this parent ID field, which will then allow me to find and display only my component assets. This might be useful, for example, if I need to dispose of an asset that is part of a component asset. I can easily run a check to see if there are other assets in FAS related to the asset I want to dispose of by selecting a component asset group in the asset list view. From there, I can simply select assets I need to dispose of and run a bulk disposal to dispose of all of them. So as you can see, it will be very useful to me to have this custom field set up for this purpose. Let's take a look now to see how to set this up. To do this, I'm going to select Customize Fields from the Customize menu to display the Customize Fields dialog. On this dialog, I'm going to look at all of my asset fields to find a field I'm not currently using. I'm going to use Custom Field 6 for this purpose, and I will call it Parent ID. And so I'll enter Parent ID in the Title field. Now I want the type, this Parent ID field to display immediately below the Company Asset ID, so I'll change the value in the Entry Order field to 3rd. After setting up this parent ID field, I need to go into each of my component assets and enter values in this field. I'll start out by going back to the Asset Detail view for the Office building. This is what I'm going to consider the parent for this component asset. So once I go into the building, I'll see that my company asset ID for this building is 10002. And so I'll enter the same value in the Parent ID field directly below. I also need to enter the same company asset ID of 10002 in the Parent ID field for the related air conditioning unit. So let's save this asset, go back to the asset list, find the air conditioning unit, Go ahead and open that up in detail view. And I'll enter 10002 in the parent ID field. Now I can do the same for my second set of component assets, the cubicle, desk, and chair. Treating the office cubicle as the parent and entering its own company asset ID in the parent ID field. In this case, it's 100019. Save the asset, go back to Asset List, and then I'll find the desk and do the same thing. Enter 100019 in the Parent ID field. And finally, I can go out to Asset List and find the chair and do the same. I'll enter 100019 in the Parent ID field. After entering values in the Parent ID field for all of my component assets, I can now set up an asset group so that I can view and report on these component assets. Let's take a look at how to set up this component asset group. I'm going to select Group Manager from the Customize menu to create a new group, and I'll enter the new group name and click on the Add button. In this example, I'll call this new group component assets. Once I click on the Add button, I can then define this group, in essence telling FAS which assets to display when I select this group in the Asset List or on Reports. For this component asset group, I'm going to look in the Parent ID field to see if there's a value in that field. 
if there's a value, I want to display the asset. Otherwise, I don't want to display it. And so I'll set up this group to look at parent ID. And if this field is not blank, display the asset. As you can see, I selected the operator is not blank. Once I click on the Add button, I can add that criteria to the group. And that's all I have to do. I click on OK, and my customized asset group is set up and ready to use. So now let's take a look at how we can use this new component asset group. When I go back to my asset list view, I can select this new component asset group from the group drop-down field. As you can see, after I select this group, the only assets displaying are my component assets. In other words, only those assets that have a value in that parent ID field. As I mentioned earlier, this can be very useful if, for example, you need to dispose of an asset that may be a component asset. In this particular example, the only related asset to my building is the air conditioning unit. And so if I need to sell the building, I can select the office building and the air conditioning unit from this list of component assets and then do a bulk disposal for those two assets. We can also use this new component assets group in reports. Let's explore that further. Let's go to the reports area and for this example I'll use the file listing report. Once I click on the Run Edit button, it will take me to the Report Definition dialog where I can customize this report by clicking on the Customize Report button. To add a field to a report, you simply select it from the list of fields, and then you click on the right arrow button to move it to a report column. You can place fields anywhere you want on a report, to reorder fields, you simply select the field and then click up or down to move it up or down in the list. In this example, I'm going to place the parent ID field right below the extension field. So I'll move that on up until it is directly below the extension field. The over under field will let you know if you're over or under allocated on space after customizing your report by adding and removing fields. So you can see here I'm under allocated by 0.01 inches and so I'm good to go. But if I had attempted to add the parent ID without removing another field, I might have been over allocated on space, in which case the over under field displays in red, letting me know how much in inches I'm over allocated. If I didn't fix the problem, one of the fields in this report might be truncated when the report is run. And so after adding the parent ID field, I resize this field down to a half an inch, and then I remove the vendor ID so it all looks like it's good to go at this point. Now that I have the parent ID added to this report, I can click Save As to give it a new name. I'm going to call this report File Listing Dash Component Assets. And then I can easily find this customized report in my listing of reports. Now when I select this customized report to run, I'll first make sure I select my new component assets group. And then for this example, I'm going to click on the Format Report tab to override the sort. I'm going to select the parent ID to sort on, and for now I'll accept the ascending order. And I'm going to choose subtotal so that I can get groupings of my component assets. Each grouping will be a different set of component assets. Now I could have set the sort when I created the component assets group. If I wanted to sort this way every time I ran a report, regardless of the report, I can set the sort options in the group itself. To do this, I can go back to Group Manager, and I can select the group and then go to the Sort tab. Once there, I can enter the sort criteria any way I want. And once I save this, every time I select this group, it will sort in the same manner. But let's get back to the report definition for the file listing report. After entering the sort criteria, 
for this uh, particular report. Let's see how it will look. Let's, let's run the report and see how it'll look. As you can see, by grouping and subtotaling by parent ID, I can now see very easily which assets are tied together. Under the parent ID grouping of 10002, the building and air conditioning unit are displayed. Under the parent ID grouping of 100019, the cubicle desk and chair are displayed. I hope this discussion of how to set up view and report on your component assets was useful. With a little upfront thought and preparation, you can configure FAS to set up your component assets, which as I mentioned previously, you'll most likely need to do if required to report under IFRS.